Many organizations leverage Navisworks to create lightweight models of their project. Uh, but because these lightweight models are used throughout your organization for different stakeholders and different departments, each requiring the model to be used to make different decisions. So they'll require different pieces of information um, that is really based off the same project, but has some of the information either left out for clarity, as well as some information in there to make uh, their decisions. So this is the, the typical uh, work package um, that's being created for Navisworks, which is a uh, engineering view or what I would call the engineering view. And the, the significance of this one is it allows the engineers to interrogate this model. It has all the properties um, and you'd be able to use the switchback command to get back to the ship constructor project. So this is something that any engineer can use that's using ship constructor. Uh, then you have views that are required, we'll say, for management or uh, more for reporting purposes. Uh, so this can have a different visual style, as you can see here. Uh, it also can have some items that are left out, such as items for installation or production or fabrication. So really to clean it up so you, because they don't need to see that information. Uh, another view here I have is a, a per unit or it could be a block or grand block, or even if I just wanted a particular system. Uh, but this could be used by a specific person that is just working in a particular area and they just don't want to worry about the rest of the project. They just really want to deal uh, with the area that they're kind of working on. And last uh, example I have here is uh, for welds. Uh, so you can create a Navisworks model that has your welds that will allow you to see what weld standards are applied, uh, ensuring that you've applied the right weld standards in the right location, as well as you can actually use it uh, uh, to, um, uh, oops, let me just uh, do here. You can also use it to uh, see how your production is actually working. So these are just four different types of Navisworks model. And what I'm gonna show you is how you can go about creating multiple Navisworks models, in essence, with a single click. Um, and I'm going to be using Enterprise uh, Publisher LT to do this. Uh, so in my blog post, uh, there's something that I uh, added, which was, um, or in the zip file, which is uh, Enterprise Platform. So if you uncompress that package, it'll uncompress to a folder called Enterprise Platform. You'll first want to copy that uh, expanded or uh, extracted folder into this, your project folder. So the same folder that has your PRO file is where you would want to put the enterprise platform uh, project. And there's going to be some initial configuration you have to do for your project, um, but it's a one-time setup. And then once it's set up, you'll be able to run uh, and generate these uh, models uh, virtually automatically by just double clicking. And I should note that these are just the four examples I created, but I can create virtually infinite amount of combinations of uh, Navisworks models. Uh, so if you go to Enterprise Platform and you go to Automation and then Navisworks Creation, uh, you'll see a lot of uh, files here. And these are the uh, files I use for configurations um, to feed into Publisher LT to automatically create these drawings. Uh, but there is some setup that's going to have to happen. Uh, the first is that if you go to this waveform Navisworks work package .bat file, is that you'll see that there's uh, some uh, configuration stuff that you need to do. Uh, one of the first things you'll have to uh, change is change the name of your PRO file, which I suspect it will not be SSI underscore training. Um, you make sure that it contains the PRO file. Uh, then you'll want to put the project path uh, where that PRO is uh, located. Uh, make sure you have the backslash it is required. And then if you have your username and password, uh, or if you just use integrated um, authentication as I am here, you can change it here. Uh, as well as this is really just working on Ship Constructor 2016 R2, but if you're using this for future versions of Ship Constructor, uh, you would want to change this uh, folder uh, directory to wherever your publisher LT EXC is located. And then everything else you can just leave. It's part of uh, the script. And then once you get it working, you can start uh, manipulating this. But I would suggest just keeping it as is for now. 
another thing that you'll have to do is you'll, you'll want to uh, use this operations file. So this is the operation files that contains um, the operations for how these models are actually created. Uh, so there's nothing that you have to copy and paste in essence, uh, assuming that you haven't changed your operations file that came with Publisher LT already. So what you'll want to do is that you'll want to go to your C users, uh, your whatever your username is, app data, roaming, SSI, enterprise platform uh, 2016 R2 in this case, or whatever version of uh, Ship Constructor and enterprise platform you're using. And you'll just simply want to or need to copy this file into uh, this directory. Uh, once you do that, uh, there is some modifications that will have to happen in this operations file. So if you again go and you edit this file, uh, the only thing you really need to change is that I am using uh, Navisworks, um, uh, it's called the file tools task runner to generate the Navisworks file. And you'll just want to make sure that this is pointing to your right Navisworks version. So I'm using Navisworks uh, 2016, so I just keep it as 2016. If you're using 2015 or 2014, you would have to change it, uh, as well as if you know if this is in the future and you're using this for 2017, you'll want to change that to 2017. And, but that should be all that you'll have to do uh, to edit it. And the last uh, editing that you'll have to do is that I have these two uh, load criteria, which is loading the the units uh, that I want to actually create a unit um, model for. Uh, so for example, again, it's uh, this last model that, uh, oops, it's uh, this last one that I was uh, showing you where it just has a particular unit. Um, so all you would have to do is if you go and again, you edit this one and you just have to change the name of the unit to be the name of the unit that you actually uh, require in this case. And again, you can go and edit this after by copying this line and pasting and adding multiple units if you want to create models that have uh, several units. So for example, if you want to do uh, the aft or the deck or, or um, uh, superstructure, you'd be able to add multiple units to get that structure for you. Um, and after that, you're, you're pretty much uh, ready to go. So to execute and to generate all these models, uh, you would just have to double click uh, the bat file. So you can double click on it and it will run. I'll do that uh, right at the end because uh, it does take a little bit of time. And it will take anywhere from, you can take 20 minutes to eight hours. It really depends on uh, the project and how many drawings you actually have. Uh, I didn't optimize it too much because I wanted to this to work for most projects. Uh, but depending on the use cases and what specific Navisworks models you want to create, uh, we could optimize it quite a bit and feel free to contact me and I can help you out with that. So once you double click this, it will automatically run Publisher LT and generate all the files. Um, where the files are located is in your root directory of your project. Um, it will create a file or a folder called published files. Uh, and in there, it will uh, create another folder called automation and then Navisworks generation. And then these are the four Navisworks or the four folders that creates these Navisworks models. So they're actually creating different Navisworks models based on the same project. Um, and you can go and you can look at the output uh, eventually when it actually generates it. So the, the key with this is this is just where I'm generating it now. I'm generating it all under published files. Uh, but what we found what a lot of uh, users do is that, you know, the engineering will be on a, a network drive. The management view will be on a different network drive where uh, managers would be able to access that data uh, as well as units and welds can be in, in, on different network drives or different locations. It does not have to be in the same folder. They can, in essence, be anywhere where this computer that I'm running this um, batch file has access to. So you could be generated anywhere. So after that, it's uh, pretty much ready to go. And all you would have to do is uh, go to uh, the batch file and double click on it as well as if you want to actually be scheduled uh, you could be familiar with the window schedule which would automate it so if i double click it what you'll see is uh, this command window that will go and will execute a couple of lines and you'll see publisher lt come up uh, several times and then <clears throat> autocad will uh, run 
as well several times. Uh, so again, the process takes anywhere from 20 minutes to um, even about six, eight hours, depending how large your project is. Hopefully uh, that was useful. Thank you.